What's up, everybody? We are back again, uh, talking about more fun stuff today. What's it gonna be? Oh, the law of the minimum, oh my goodness. I have been covering off kind of a lot with the uh, soil nutrition side. We're continuing on this soil series. I decided that today it was a good idea to illustrate the whole uh, theory behind Liebig's barrel, uh, Justice von Liebig, okay? So what I have talked about in many videos leading up to this point, is how everything has to be in balance and your soil system is only as strong as the weakest link. The plants can only take up things that it really needs at a time and if something is blocking uh, other nutrients, it's not going to be able to get what it needs. If you're low on a certain element, then other elements aren't going to be accessible. So hence the law of the minimum. Now, uh, I had somebody post and I, I forgive me that I can't remember uh, who it was, uh, but they were asking about nickel. Uh, that came up and how if there was even an imbalance in nickel you could have imbalances elsewhere. Well, that's that's true. Um, so you have to think about things like this. There are 16 essential plant nutrients, okay? And we're talking about carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, zinc, oh my gosh, there's so many. And we don't think about total nutrition with all of those elements in mind. Now, uh, CHNO, air and water, photosynthesis. We're gonna create everything pretty much through that method. Uh, products like urea, uh, CH4, NO, NO2, I believe is what the chemical formula is that. You've got your carbon, hydrogen, um, oxygen, nitrogen, kind of everything's tied into that particular molecule. So, so you have all these elements kind of coming from other places, especially since it's atmospheric. But here's what we're doing today. I have props. Give me props. I have props. This is a cup. This is a cup with 16 lines on it, just like what I mentioned before. Now, it really, it doesn't need to have 16 lines on it because of what we just said, CH and O, you're pretty much going to get anyway. But here is what I would like to illustrate. We have with us this Dixie cup. We also have with us a bottle of Hydrate. This is a, a new product that maybe none of you have heard about. Um, it is a uh, uh, hydrogen, dihydrogen oxide. If you guys are familiar with this, dihydrogen oxide. You gotta be careful with it. Uh, it, does, it does kill, you know, don't wanna overdo it. Anyway, check this out. So if we have a completely balanced soil system, we should be able to fill all spaces and give the plant everything that it needs. Our cup, therefore, is full, okay? Now, here's the thing. If we begin to have deficiencies in areas of the soil, we are not going to be able to fill that cup and the plant is not going to be able to function as it should. So if we just say, let's go ahead and take out some zinc, well, now we have a problem because if that's low, I'm never gonna be able to get this back up to the level of where it needs to be to have all of these other elements in here function properly. So, you know, if we go low on potassium or something, take another one out. We're gonna run that out too. Now we, now we can't even access any of these other minerals that we have in excess until we fix that by filling in those elements that are missing, getting that wrapped back up, and then you can go back to filling the entire pan again, right? Fill the pan, everything goes back to normal. Look at that, I can't even believe this is holding together. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that go back. Let's show our deficiencies again. Oh no, now we can't access anything. That's the law of the minimum. So whatever the weakest link in here is going to affect whatever may be the strongest. Weak link in the chain, okay? Now, let's talk about the opposite way. There's also the law of the maximum. That would mean that you only have a finite amount of space in order to fill things up. You have 100% of whatever it might be. So if you're trying to go over an allotment or to create uh, an environment by using uh, nutrients in excess that you know aren't really called for in your soil, then you create a problem. So let's go back to this. Let's just say that a soil test is high in phosphorus, okay? I'm gonna tap this all the way out. We've got this maxed out, 100% and you're already high 
on, with, with your phos levels. And if you start adding more phosphorus to the soil, then you get this kind of action, which is just pointless, right? You're hitting a maximum level to where the plant can't take anymore, the soil can't take anymore, and now you've exceeded this law of the maximum. And we see this a lot in the top three, the big three products, in P, well, not K. It's really hard to overdo it with K. Um, but that, that is where you're going to get it. And nitrogen and phosphorus typically is where you'll start to see these excesses. And the only way that you should ever be buffering against those is if you are reading low as if it's already low. If you've got an issue in your soil, then you need to patch it because it goes back to this. If there's a hole, then we need to fix the hole. So think about that for a second. This is why looking at those tests can be important and not, it's not just for a fertilizer recommendation. You're looking at things in parts per million. So let's look at that math here real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my props. Props to me. All right, so typically how we would look at things in soil is measurements on the top six inches of soil uh, over an acre you have roughly two million pounds of soil that that would be pretty common so then you start looking at things in parts per million so if you have you know four thousand parts per million of calcium okay then in weight if you want to think about it that way you can convert that into pounds now you have eight thousand pounds of calcium in that one acre field that's pretty significant if you start thinking about things that way. Now, here's where it can get a little bit tricky and where people need to pay attention to things that they're putting down. If you have a soil deficiency and you have growing grass and um, you're, you're trying to get something back in balance, most of the time you are not going to be able to fill that back up in one application unless it's very minuscule. So when I see things where uh, you know, potassium is, is reading at like 12 or 13 ppm or something, and it really needs to come up a lot, it's going to be very difficult to throw out the 200 pounds of K that it's going to take to get that up to now 110 or 115 ppm. So you have to kind of think about things that way. There's, there's going to be spacing and timing in order to get those elements back up. Now, flip side of that, your soil test, when you're looking at this, is based on the solubility index, really. Uh, the, the nutrients that are available that are showing on your soil test are what are free flowing with water. So they, you know, when you buffer everything out, if you look at your soil test and you've got a pH of an 8.2 and it says buffer pH 7.2, then that is the solubility index at 7.2 pH, okay? So that means that at eight something, that's not a clear picture of what's actually happening. You have stuff that's locked out, and if you don't take the advice to adjust that pH down, you're not even going to get what's banked in there that's soluble and flowable into the plant. So you really have to think about that. It's not just about the bags of FERT or whatever you're going to be applying. It's about all of the other elements that contribute to the pH, to patching the holes, and then to help carrying these other elements into the plant on its back. And I, I said that about calcium the other day because it does work that way. It kind of like helps to just facilitate this exchange. Then you're going to get that with more and more nutrients. But if you're going to go down this rabbit hole, this sort of you know soil and understanding interactions, and um, you know you're trying to take lawns to a full-on next level. Um, not just the standard way of thinking. It, 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 it takes consideration and it takes planning, but what you'll find is that many of these nutrients and many of these elements are in just very small parts create this just beautiful uh, coming together of, of nutrients and then plant life, growth, vigor, color, okay? So, that's it. Now, I hope that illustration helps because I do get a lot of people that ask me about it and, and that's, I've used the, that metaphor and that visual a lot, usually on a PowerPoint presentation, so that people can kind of understand what's going on. Um, and it, it all feeds back into, again, things I've talked about many, many times, which are, there's, there's not necessarily a miracle product um, that goes into lawn care. There's just stuff that you've forgotten to put out. That's it. You forgot to put something out for a while. Your lawn, your soil is calling for it. You gotta give it to it. 
and that's why things respond so much better. So start thinking that way, fill in the gaps, and you can do this by just looking at your history is a good way to do it. If you've been taking care of your lawn for 10 years and you've been on a program that is just one product or you know one style of fertility and, and neglecting some of these other items, then it, you're going to have an aha moment. You may have built up a surplus of all these other elements and all of your minors and what would be con, you know less considered most of the time are, are down here. You've got this thing going, so we're gonna need to build these back up and as that happens, we form an equilibrium and then the grass just grows. So that's all I got for today. I hope you're having a super happy Sunday. I will see you all real soon. Uh, we are gonna be talking about soil life in the next video and that's going to include microbial activity, uh, organic matter, uh, beneficial fungi, nematodes. Oh my gosh, Woo! Uh, stay tuned for it. I'll talk to you guys real soon.